Greetings, good people. Excited to be on tonight. Do me a favor. Tag somebody. Share this. And comment and let me know where you're watching from as you come in tonight. Excited to be on with you. Let me know where you're watching from if you watching on YouTube or Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you can hit the share button. You can also tag somebody, let them know we are on tonight. I'm gonna share something real brief with you. Praise the Lord. Wanda, good to see you tonight. God bless you. Just a couple of more minutes to share. If you're on YouTube, you can share that link out too. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Sean Marshall here. Happy Sunday. It's been a good day. Mr. Walter Owens, Salem would say, it's a great day. It's a glorious day. <laughs> it's been a real, real good day. God is faithful. And I'm grateful for what the Lord is doing. Good evening. Hey, Lisa, I see you from Dalton. Hey, Deborah. Hey, Nidra, good to see you as well. Thank you for liking, tagging, and sharing this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you for those hearts. All right. Let's get into this. So if you are new here, um, I am Sean Marshall. Uh, I am serving in the city of Chicago. It's my home, born and raised. On the south side of Chicago, I am the husband to Veronica, father to Sage Olivia. Um, I am a pastor, I'm a consultant, and I am author of the book Transition Decisions, How to Get Unstuck, Embrace Change, and Make Your Next Move Now. And I share content to help people survive transition, to help people navigate their way through the changes of life whether those changes have come to them in welcomed ways or whether those changes have come to them through unwelcomed ways, through crisis. Um, and so if you want content that can help you process the changes and challenges of life, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Your Next Move Now. We'll be glad to see you there. Uh, do me a favor also and let somebody else know who's going through a transition of any kind, job, transition, relationship transition, ministry transition, purpose, life transition. Um, I want to support people and have a burden to help people think about how to navigate change. Change is what happens to you, but transition is how you respond. And often we get stuck because we don't know how to respond when change happens. That's my job. Uh, Adelaide Stevenson once said that change is inevitable, but change for the better is a full-time job. Everywhere that I serve, the underlining, uh, the underlying thought, the underlying purpose is change for the better. Change is going to happen whether you do something or not. I want to help walk you through change for the better. And so that is my assignment. So, so glad that you 
are here tonight. I want to uh, share something with you. It's a thought that I've been thinking uh, for some time now. Um, it is, hey, Cynthia, so good to have you on tonight. It's, it's a thought that I've been thinking because um, there are some people that I believe that are trying to be faithful to the call that God has placed on their life. There are some people who are trying to navigate the changes and transitions that have come to them because of an assignment or a burden or a call that they have embraced. There are people who are trying to be faithful to um, an anointing that they believe that God has placed upon their life. And so they're just trying to figure this, this thing out. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about three keys to a shift. Three keys to a shift. I like to make things real practical, real applicable, and put them in ways that you can remember them. Um, and that's that's what I want to do tonight, because many of you are in between um, God speaking to you and clarifying to you what your calling and what your assignment is, and the space and the place where you can actually like tap into that and operate in that. If that's you, let me know in the comments. Let me know. Yeah, it's me. Um, I feel like God called me. God um, put it on my heart to start a business. God put it on my heart to write a book. God put it on my heart to launch a ministry. God put it on my heart to um, go back to school. God put it on my heart to um, do something different in my relationships. God put it on my heart to Go on ahead and launch that nonprofit. God put it on my heart. I keep seeing stuff on the news talking about our kids. And, uh, you know, so I, I got tired of saying it's a shame. Somebody got to do something about that. I started to feel the burden that I needed to do something about it. And so you've been sitting with it and you've been trying to figure out how do you go from the place where you receive the call, right? Where you're aware of the burden on your heart, where you're aware of the burden on your life, and the place where you're actually able to take some action. So I want to talk to you about three keys. And as a matter of fact, I, I really want to, what I really want to do, I, I want to kind of approach this from a more theocentric point of view, meaning God focused, right? Because here's 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 the giveaway. I'm gonna give this away before I even get into this. Many of you all, many of us, are trying to figure out something that God has already figured out. So we're trying to figure out how to do a thing. We're trying to figure out how to render our obedience. We're trying to figure out how to do the thing God has given us to do. We're trying to figure out the steps. We're trying to figure out. And most times the reality is God is already fully aware of how he's going to get you from the place of hearing that call, that vision, that burden, and the place of you actually living into it. God, God's already thought that thing through. The issue for us is actually knowing what God is up to and being able to receive and respond to what God is doing. So I am guilty that many times I've heard what God wanted me to do and I started trying to do it for God, not knowing that I was doing it without God, away from God not recognizing the ways in which God was already at work in my life to do what he said he was going to do in my life. So I'm trying to figure out how to write the book, what I don't say. And God is giving me circumstances and situations. And God is giving me content and God is giving me material. Hey, Elder Frank, good to see you, brother. God is God is giving me all of the information. God is giving me the strategy. God's laying the strategy out. 
the, the challenge is not me trying to develop a strategy. The, the challenge really is seeing God's strategy at work in my life and surrendering to that. Okay, so that, that's the giveaway before I get into this. And the text that I want to refer to, just make a note of it, is going to be 1 Samuel 22. 1 Samuel 22. And I'll read the first few verses of 1 Samuel 22. It says, so David departed from there to the cave of Adullam. Okay, he departed from there to the cave of Adullam. Where is the there that he departed from? Okay, he departed from, in the previous chapter, we see that David goes to Ahimelech the priest, right? He comes to Nob, and uh, then after leaving Ahimelech the priest, right, he, he goes now, for uh, chapter 22, he goes to Adullam, the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's household heard of it, they went down there to him. Verse two, everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontented gathered to him and he became captain over them. Now there were about 400 men with him. So we know that David, has been anointed to be king of Israel. We know that God has turned away from Saul because Saul was too arrogant. Saul was too prideful. Saul got lifted up in his own sense of self, in his own ego. He felt like he could do things his own way. Felt like he had known enough about the ways of God and the ways of leading to say, well, God, I know what you're saying, but it makes more sense if I do it this way. And so God says, I, my spirit is not going to dwell with Saul. I, I, I'm taking my hand off of him, and I'm going to raise up someone who is a man after my own heart. First Samuel 15, the prophet Samuel goes, and he anoints, he ends up anointing David, who is the youngest who is not at the age of conscript, conscription, who is not even officially a soldier, God anoints him to be the king of Israel. Now, the anointing is on his life. And with the anointing on his life, David resumes his service. Do not confuse your current position with God's plan for your life. What do I mean? Many of us read our future from our present. So we say, well, I can't possibly be anointed to do these things. Look where I am. Look what I'm doing. In 1 Samuel 17, the Bible says that David is bringing lunch to his brother. So he's gone now from shepherd to caterer. Remember, he's not old enough to be conscripted in the army. So David, hey, Cheryl, David shows up to this battle and all of the official soldiers are hiding from Goliath. And this unofficial soldier, this unofficial king, this anointed but not yet appointed king ends up demonstrating that the favor of God and the hand of God is on his life because when he realizes that the king's heart, Saul's heart is troubled by this warrior, Goliath, he says, let me take care of it. You know the story. He has victory over Goliath. Now, the Bible says that when he comes back to town, the people are singing and there's a song that they're singing. Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his ten thousands. Now, the spirit of the Lord has already departed from Saul. And now Saul gets filled with rage and filled with jealousy because the people are singing David's praises and not his anymore. Okay, remember, David has been anointed king, but he's not in the seat yet. He's faithfully serving without the seat. 
And many of you, like David, are anointed for seats you're not sitting in yet. You are anointed for positions that you don't yet hold. You have been uniquely graced by God for assignments that you have not yet stepped into. So in the process of waiting for God to do what you are waiting for God to do to bring you into that place, often we're trying to figure out what we need to be doing, right? So as far as David knows, he's being faithful. He's serving the king. He's playing his heart to, to help Saul in, in the court of Saul, playing his music so that the spirits that come to trouble Saul no longer trouble him because whenever David played on his heart, that the spirits that troubled Saul would give him relief. And so David's thinking, okay, let me do that. And let me be faithful to that. And, and then there's, I'm bringing lunches to my brothers on the battlefield and and I see Goliath. Let me just be faithful. Let me let me serve and do what I need to do. And perhaps God will pray, bring me wherever he wants me to be. Perhaps this will work out. Maybe I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll get the next step later. And then David, being faithful, looks up one day and there's a spear coming at his head. Because Saul is now jealous of him and Saul wants to kill him. And little does David know that this has set off a sequence of events that are going to shift David to the place that God has ordained and anointed him to be. So the first thing that you need, I know it's going to be counterintuitive, but the first key to shifting you to where God has anointed and called you to be in is conflict. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's conflict. God uses conflict to catalyze your call. <laughs> God uses conflict with people close to you. God uses conflict between you and people that you've served. God uses conflict that breaks out in the spaces where you've been faithful. God uses conflict. God allows conflict to jump off in your close relationships between you, people that you love, people that you serve, people that you honor, people that you respect. God will let conflict jump off because sometimes God recognizes that it is the conflict that will catalyze you. Because some of us are loyal to a fault. And some of us will overstay in some assignments. And some of us will be so faithful to the place that we will forsake the plan and the purpose of God on your life. So sometimes God has to stick the key in the ignition of your calling that is called conflict. And when it happens, what's really helpful for you to know is it, it's, it's take your focus off of the people and off of what they're doing and how they're doing you wrong or how you or what did you do? Because that's where you get stuck, right? What did I do? Why is this man throwing this? Javelin, I'm, I was only trying to serve him. I was only trying to help him. Why does he not like me? Why does she not like? Why are they dishonoring me? Why are they disrespecting me? Why, 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 why are they treat me like this now? What, what did I do? Maybe I did do something. Maybe I shouldn't have done what I done. Maybe I shouldn't have said what I said. Maybe I shouldn't have. Lord, well, maybe I should have done it differently. No, nope, forget that. Conflict. When it jumps off is what God will use. Listen, God will often break your heart here to move your feet there. Sometimes our feet don't move until our hearts get broken. So God uses conflict. God used that conflict to get David from one place to another place. Okay? 
The second thing that you need, the second key to a shift is a cave. David runs to a cave. Now, the interesting thing about a cave, right, is that in a cave, you're not, one of the things about a cave is that this is where bears will hibernate in caves because there's no light, there's no exposure, right? There's uh, no fresh air. So bears will go to hibernate in caves. There's not a lot going on in a cave. The cave is a place of obscurity. The cave is a place of inobviousness. The cave is a place of being hidden. The cave is a place where the only thing that's talking to you is the echo of your own voice. Right? David ends up going to this cave. Sometimes God will allow conflict to send you to places, to lead you to places that are lonely, that are dark, that are dry, that aren't fresh, hard to breathe in, hard to move around in, not a lot of resources. God allows the anointed king, the man after his own heart, to find himself in a cave. But God is going to use this cave. See, the dark places of your life, I know that it's counterintuitive because the prevailing Christian narrative in our society, in our consumer culture, is that God when he's getting ready to move you forward or to elevate you, that God brings you to a place of spotlight and God brings you to a platform and God raises you up. Now, sometimes when God is preparing to shift you into the thing he's ordained for your life, sometimes he takes you to dark caves. Sometimes he takes you to very lonely situations. Sometimes he takes you to very dry, very isolated spaces where there's not a lot of room to move or to breathe because God knows that that space is going to incubate something into you that's going to be necessary for the process. The cave and the conflict are all a part of God's process of forming David for the call to be king. It wasn't a palace. It wasn't a dressing room. It wasn't an air-conditioned mobile bus. It wasn't a comfortable space in a hotel. It was a cave. Have you ever felt like God set you up? You felt like God said, listen, here's what I'm gonna do with your life. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, do it, God. Do it, God, do it. I'm going to use you to do this. I'm going to position you to do that. I'm going to anoint you to help these people. I'm going to put you in these positions to serve these people. I'm going to release this grace on your life. I'm going to have you doing these things. You, Oh, thank you, Lord. And then the next thing you know, it's dark. And you're binding up the devil. And the devil's like, I ain't got nothing to do, bro. I, 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 I didn't do this one. God will lead you to some places that don't make sense for kings to be in. And if you're not careful, you will allow your current condition to cause you to doubt your call you will conclude that you're not a king because you're in a cave. You will conclude 
that God really hasn't anointed you to be an entrepreneur because you're in debt right now. You will conclude that God has not anointed you to be a leader because you don't know what to do. You feel like you don't even know how to lead yourself. And you will conclude that your current space is telling you that you're wrong about your future. Your current space is not indicative of your future. It is indicative of your formation. He needed a cave. And then finally, final key to a shift is community. I love it. Because the Bible says that when he gets into this cave, ooh, I love this. I want to read it. Can I read it? <laughs> want to read it? Here you go. When he gets into this cave, the Bible says his brothers and all his father's household heard of it. They went down there to him in case you thought that because they left him out when samuel came that they didn't like him and because his brothers tried to chastise him when he wanted to fight goliath that they just that his family was whack that's not true his family was right there with him in the middle of this okay here it, i don't know why god wants me to say this but god must want me to say it don't be so quick to create this narrative that completely dismisses your family okay it's it's good that some of you all are able to do like Jesus. Who are my mother and my brothers, right? Um, these are my mother and brothers. That's good. That's fine. But some of us create this narrative in our minds that everybody in our inner world is against us and ain't they ain't with us. And, and sometimes that's just not true. Okay. Sometimes sometimes that's just not true. So you got to be careful about the narrative that you create about where people are and where people aren't. Anyway, thank you, Holy Spirit. They go down to the cave with him. And this is what I want to get to verse two. Everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. What happens? David's in the cave. He's in a dark space. And some other people meet him there and they're like, we in a dark space too, bro. We're in debt. We're disconnected. We don't know what's going on. We don't know where we're going to be working. We don't know where we're going to be eating. You ain't the only one. You're not the only one. You're not the only one. You're not the only one on the run. You're not the only one broke. You're not the only one disgusted. You're not the only one broken. You're not the only one isolated. You're not the only one alone. Don't allow the enemy to make you think that some strange unusual, uncommon thing has come upon you. You're not the only one fighting depression. You think you're the only one fighting depression? You think you're the only one feeling anxious? You think you're the only one who's had to file bankruptcy? You think you're the only one who's had to go through foreclosure? You think you're the only one who's standing in the unemployment line, you think you're the only one who's on public aid right now. Really? Really? No. They all gather to him. David goes into the cave. And when he goes into the cave, he finds his community. And when he finds his community, the Bible says that he becomes captain over them. And there were about 400 men with him. What does God do? In this process, God gives David an army. There are some people who are ready to fight with you. There are some people who are facing the same challenges as you. You are not alone. I feel that so strong on me tonight. Would you type that in the chat on whatever platform you're on? Would you share this to your page and type in that thing when you share it? You are not alone. Would you tag somebody that you know and tell them you are not alone? You're not the only one. 
The devil is an entire liar. You are not alone. You're not alone. And what God is about to do to help you move from where you are to where you need to be is going to happen in community. I love it because God does not bring David what he needs outside of the cave. In other words, many of us are waiting to come out of the cave to find our people. Oh, Jesus, thank you. You've been waiting, you've been waiting to come out of your dark space. You've been waiting to come out of the darkness. You've been waiting to come out of isolation. You've been waiting to get on the other side of this, to get through this, to look for your people. But what God is doing, God is trying to connect you to the people that you need and the people who need you right where you are in the middle of the mess, in the middle of the separation, in the middle of the bankruptcy, in the middle of the eviction, in the middle of the job transition, in the middle of the relocation, in the middle of the diagnosis, in between, when you try, you don't know if you're going to beat it or not. God's trying to connect you with people now. David needed an army and the people needed a captain. You are not alone. There is a people and a place for you. Can I tell you, you don't have to build what God called you to build by yourself. Cheryl, you're not by yourself. Lisa, you're not by yourself. Wanda, you're not by yourself. Lolita, you're not alone. Nidra, you're not alone. Frank, you're not alone. Cynthia, you're not alone. Cheryl, Dana, Patrice, y'all, Vicky, you are not alone. Deborah, you are not alone. I know that you look at your life right now and you don't see the people that you used to see, but you are not alone. I know that there were some key people that left you, but you are not alone. I know that there are some people who abandoned you, but you are not alone. I know that there were some people that rejected you, but you are not alone. I know that the people that you thought, Monica, you are not alone. There's a people for you. In a few weeks, I'm getting ready to do something that I've never done before. Because you know what? I know the power of a community. My brother Frank is on here tonight. In a few minutes, my brother, Pastor C. Terrell Wheat, will be on. A few weeks ago, I was preaching for my brother, Pastor Quentin Mumphrey. I was a few weeks ago preaching for my brother, Pastor David Washington. I was talking earlier today with my brother in California, Pastor Daryl Scarborough. These are people that I've been doing life with for over 25 years. <clears throat> Every time the devil tries to tell me that I'm alone, I'm by myself. I can say, devil, you a liar. And I can call any one of their names. I can say, no, devil, you a liar. I got Frank. I got Daryl. I got Dwayne. I got Quentin. I got Terrell. No, you a liar. I might be in a cave, but you can't tell me I don't have a community. I might be going through a situation, but you can't lie to me and tell me I don't have a circle. A community of people, a circle will change your life. So in a few weeks, we're getting ready to do something I've never done before. My brother, Pastor C. Terrell Wheat, and I 
we are getting ready to host the manifest inner circle. The manifest inner circle. Y'all, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're thinking about doing. But if you know that you're in a cave and you know that you got some conflict, you need to be in a community. I believe that God is organizing a circle of people who can help you be who God created you to be, do what God created you to do and live the life that God created you to live. People who can walk alongside of you, birth, help you birth and build the thing that God has given to you. This is what I need you to do. Link is in the chat. I need you right now. I need you to click on that link. I need you to add your name to that wait list. I need you to sign up right now. I need you to make sure that when the information comes out, that you're among the first people to know. I don't want you to miss your circle. I don't want you to miss your community. CTRLWeek.com slash community waitlist. We're organizing a circle for you. My brother, Pastor Wheat, and I, we're going to walk alongside people for six weeks. We're going to form a community. I don't care what cave you're in. I don't care what situation you're going through. I don't care what you're dealing with. You are not the only one. And whatever you're going through right now is not going to stop where God has called you to go. It's only going to be used by God to prepare you, to form you, and to connect you to the people who are going to be going with you. So I need you to sign up for that. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Because we know how David's story turned out. Those 400 men became part of his mighty men. And God used the next steps in David's process to help him be who he anointed him to be. You need a circle. You need a circle. You need a circle. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people tonight. And I thank you that they are not alone. I thank you, Lord, that not only are there people who know what it's like to be where they are. I thank you, Father, that as my pastor said earlier today, that you are not a high priest who doesn't understand. You understand, you know. God, you went through it alone so that we wouldn't have to. As we look in a few weeks toward the cross, you had to carry the cross. You had to get the nails in your hands and the nails in your feet and the crown of thorns on your head. You had to die. You had to do it so that we would be connected to a body of believers. And so God, I just thank you. I thank you for your sacrifice and I thank you that because of your sacrifice, we can have a circle. And so I pray for your people tonight. I pray that they would be encouraged in the conflict. I pray that they would interpret the conflict correctly. 
that they would not be stalled or stuck or delayed or discouraged because of the conflict that they are experiencing right now, because of the conflict in their health, the conflict in their money, the conflict in their relationships. God, encourage their hearts by your spirit. And God, I thank you for the cave and what you're doing in the cave and how you're forming us in the cave. And even in the silence and the suffering, you're building into us exactly what we need. And God, thank you for the community. Thank you for the people that will fight with us and for the people that we're going to fight with, for the purposes that will be unleashed when we connect with the people that you've ordained us to connect with in this season, not on the other side of it, not when we've got a cute testimony, but God now in the middle. Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do me a favor. If you're on the wait list, just, just let me know you signed up. Let me know I'm in. Let me know. So excited about this. I'm very clear. I'm very clear on my assignment in 2024. My assignment for 2024 is to help you respond to what God is doing, to help you get to where God's called you to be. I see you, Monica. Glad to have you. I see you, Cynthia. I see you, Lisa. Thank you so much. I see you, Lolita. Thank you. Glad to have you. I see you, Kiesler. I see you. I see you. Thank you so much. We're not alone. We're going to do this thing together. Together. We're going to do this together. If we're going to go through a cave, listen, if you're going through a cave and I know about it, I'm not about to let you go through that cave alone. If you're in a conflict, I'm not about to let you be in that conflict by yourself. God has given me something that can be a blessing to you. I'm not going to let you do that by yourself. 2024, my call is to help you be who God created you to be. Do what God created you to do. Live the life that God created you to live. Help you navigate the transitions so that you can be where God is. So you can respond to what he's doing and watch his plan and purpose unfold in your life. Thank you for those of you all who are sowing. Thank you for those of you all who are partnered with us in this work, in this effort. I love you so much. Thank God for you. A few more minutes. My brother, Pastor C. Terrell Wheat is going to be on, going to lead us. Uh, in Sunday night prayer at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. You've already caught up on your hour. You gave the hour up. You, it's all good now. You figured it out. You worked it out. So you're good. Get your cup of coffee. Do whatever you need to do. Meet me in a few minutes when my brother goes live. I won't be on next Sunday at 7 p.m., but be listening out for something else. Be listening out for something else. Won't be with you next Sunday at 7. Stay tuned. I'll let you know where I am. God bless you. Have an amazing night and a great week. Bye-bye.